Lifers, it's week four of Life Groups and week three of the fitness series. And this Sunday, we talked all about financial fitness. And I just want to encourage you, if you haven't taken control of your financial fitness, if you're in debt or if you don't have a plan to pay off your debt, if you're spending more than you make or if you need help investing in your future or your children's future, you should take the Financial Peace University class. That class is beginning uh, on October 8th at 6 p.m. here at New Life. It's a Monday night class. The cost is, uh, I think it's a little bit over 100 bucks or something like that, but it's well worth it. If you're interested, make sure to let us know so we can get a kit ordered for you and you can take advantage of that class. Okay, there's a story in the Bible of a time when Jesus was doing what he always did, telling stories, parables, to a group of people, and in that group of people were some rich religious teachers, we call them Pharisees. Jesus told the crowd a story about a lost coin, you've probably heard it, and then he told a story about a lost sheep and a lost boy, the the parable of the prodigal son who ran away from home. And I'm assuming at this point, the rich religious guys started to get tired of Jesus' stories because he was always making them the bad guy in his stories. So they started to walk away. And then when Jesus saw them walking away, I assume, he started telling another story and he started talking loud enough that they could hear him. So he said in Luke chapter 16, there was a rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. And the rich religious teachers turned right back around. He had their attention at rich man, I'm assuming. That's because they were all rich men. It was very lucrative to be a religious leader in that time. And they all had slaves that managed their money for them. And these rich men had a heck of a time trying to get their slaves to be honest with how they managed their master's money. One day, a report came and the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, what's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. What am I going to do? So this money manager has a short amount of time to figure out what he's going to do after he's fired. And he's a smart guy. So he realizes that he should spend his time investing in some relationships. Verse four, ah, I know how I'll ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I am fired. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. That's a lot of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat, was the reply. Here, the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. And the rich guys in the audience, while Jesus is telling the story, are assuming that the rich man in the story is about to be furious at the money manager. If he was mad before, he's going to kill him now, right? It wasn't the money manager's money to give away. And that's the key to the story. I'll say that again. It wasn't his money to give away. And I'm assuming Jesus smiled at this point and he said, the rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. He's saying, you've been given skills and a brain to make some money, so make money. That's a good thing. Work as hard and make as much money as you can. In fact, I believe some people have been given the spiritual gift of making money. So use that gift. Would you stop here and answer the first three questions and then push play?
So let's continue in the story of the rich man and his money manager. Next in the story, Jesus did something that he didn't usually do. He interpreted the story for them. And this is so helpful, so practical. Verse 9, here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then, when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest with little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Verse 11. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? So the message has been revealed. We're not just talking about how you manage money. We're talking about what you need to do to get true riches of heaven. He's saying, your money isn't your money. You're managing it for God. So give it away. Jesus was saying, your money is not only a tool, it's a test. Your money is a test. Will you pass that test? Will you use it to benefit others? It's not your money. It's God's money. And this is really cool. If you learn to give it away, you'll get back more than you had before. And we're not just talking about money. But God will bless you. Would you be faithful to give back to God what he has blessed you with? And I'm biased in this conversation, but I think there's no better place for you to give your money than to new life. Be faithful with little, and God will give you much. We're starting a giving challenge, a tithe challenge this week, and it's not too late to join. If you believe God when he says that money is a test and how we spend it reflects what's going on in our hearts, if you believe God when he says that he will bless you for your faithfulness in managing his money well, would you join us in this challenge? Stop here and answer the last two questions, and then I'll see you Sunday in church.